Today we're gonna to take a look at how to get accurate white balance in mixed lighting situations like this or this. Now, what do I mean by mixed lighting? Well, for those of you who don't know, on your camera, there is a white balance selector where you choose what lighting condition you're shooting under and the camera applies a certain color cast to the photographs to correct for the color of that light. Now, some of you might be going like, wait a second, light doesn't have color to it, but it really does. Our eyes just compensate for this automatically. So we don't have to do this with our brain, but our cameras, they see bluer lights, redder lights, greener lights. We need to tell the camera what lights we're shooting under so that it can make the necessary corrections to make our images look good. Now, while your camera has these settings, you can run into issues with mixed lighting. An example would be if you have daylight with also a fluorescent light, both lights illuminating the same subject. In those situations, it's difficult to know whether you should put your camera on the daylight mode and you'll get a little bit of green from the fluorescence or put it on fluorescent mode and you'll have a little bit of leftover magenta from the correction of the fluorescent lights in the daylight areas. It just gets messy. So one solution to this in mixed lighting situations or anytime you're under a difficult to, uh, I would say, identify light is to use a custom white balance. Now, custom white balance can be done in the camera or in editing. And essentially what it is, is it's providing the computer or your camera with a neutral target, something that should not have any color cast to it. And if we tell our camera, hey, this should be neutral, the camera can look at what color that thing actually is, i.e. what color the light is falling on it, and it can provide or create the necessary correction to eliminate that color cast. The same is true with Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop. You can tell the computer, hey, this should be colorless. This should be equal parts red, green, and blue, even though it's not, and the computer will apply the necessary corrections to fix it. And that really is all custom white balance is. It's providing your camera or your computer with a neutral target and telling it to correct based on that knowledge. So what do I mean by neutral target? Well, you can use a wide variety of things as this neutral target to varying degrees of success. So let's talk about a few of the options. The cheapest and most straightforward option that I recommend to a lot of photographers is simply a piece of white paper. By definition, white paper should be white. So if you bring a piece of white paper or cardstock on a photo shoot and you take a picture of that white paper under the lighting condition that you're under, and you gotta be careful here, right? You don't wanna shadow the paper from the lights that are in the scene hold the paper out in front of the camera and get a picture with all those different light sources falling on that piece of paper. When you take that picture, if that paper does not look white, the camera we know and, and it will learn does not have the correct white balance and it can then provide the necessary changes. The problem with paper is it has a lot of different whites. You guys can see if I hold this in the shade right here, right, this middle one is a little bit more orange, this back one is a little bit more blue, and this one here in the front is a little bit more white. So if you can't really get a pure, like who's to say what white paper is, these all came out of boxes of paper that said white, this is a good option, but it's not great. Moving up in, uh, I would say cost, would be buying yourself something like a gray card. This is a gray card that photographers have used for a long time. And usually photographers use these for exposing, but you can also use this as a white balance target. Gray cards by definition should be colorless. They should have equal parts, red light, green light, and blue light, and therefore be neutral gray. These cost about $5, and they're gonna be a much better representation of a neutral target compared to some white paper. I do wanna throw one quick thing in here. It is called white balance, but it doesn't always have to be a white target. Really 18% gray or middle gray or brighter is a good suitable target for custom white balance. Finally, we get to the most expensive, but also I would say the most accurate of those, which would be buying something like a color checker card. Now, these are manufactured by a lot of different companies. This one is by a company called X-Rite. Now they're called Calibrite. Uh, there's also ones from companies called Data Color. A lot of different companies make these. But what they are is, they are color targets. They have a lot of these little colored squares, and you can use these for color correction and custom camera profiles, a bunch of stuff that we might make videos on in the future. But all of these that I've ever seen also have a special section of them that is made to be a white balance target. And that's this right here. And this right here is manufactured to be the perfect color 
I should say color, shouldn't say color, the perfect tone of white or gray to use as a white balance target. So if you are maybe a little bit more in the commercial studio photography side, I might recommend picking up a color checker card uh, because beyond just being a white balance target, having those colors as good references can be a good thing. Um, also, a lot of brands have a photography version, which is this one right here, as well as a video version. It has a slightly different palette of colors to choose from in the video version. However, they both have that white balance target. So no matter what, that's the one that we're gonna be focusing on focusing on today. So now that we've talked a little bit about targets and we understand what we need to kind of bring with us in the field, um, and, and you all a little side note, uh, I go on pretty much every shoot I go on and I bring a color checker with me because it's such a useful tool to just have in your pocket if you're in a difficult lighting situation or anything like that. Um, I know a lot of our students, they bring a piece of folded up white paper just as a, as a last ditch resort, last effort um, that they might have to use in order to use as a white balance target themselves. So now that we understand white balance targets, let's talk about how we actually correct for things. And this is where we kind of need to talk about two different avenues. The first is correcting things in the camera, and the second is correcting things on the computer. Both types have their merits, uh, their kind of upsides and downsides. We're gonna go through both of them in this video. So feel free to skip ahead. We're gonna start with camera correction first. Now this gets a little bit challenging because we all use different brands of cameras and every brand of camera does this a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do today is kind of talk about a general overview of how this is done in the camera, but I definitely recommend that you check your camera manual and just look up custom white balance or setting a custom white balance and you can see specifically how it's done with your camera. With my camera, what it involves is taking a photograph first in the scene of your neutral target. So what I like to do is hold my target, my white balance target out at arm's length in front of me. I like to point my camera at it and take a picture that only contains this card itself. It doesn't have to be a sharp picture. Um, it does have to be properly exposed, but basically we wanna fill the frame with your gray card or white piece of paper or color checker uh, white balance target. You wanna fill the frame with this. Now, like I said before, it's also very important that this target has the light in the scene falling on it. So don't hold it upside down and shoot it from underneath or something weird like that. You wanna hold it in a way that all of those mixed light sources fall onto this target evenly. We then take a picture of this, we go into the menu on our camera and we tell the camera, hey, look at this specific picture. This picture is of a neutral target. Set this as my custom white balance. And the camera's menu will say, oh, okay, that's it's supposedly a neutral target. It looks like it's a little bit too green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the opposite of green, which is, wow, brain fart. <laughs> so I'm gonna add the opposite of green, which is magenta to correct for that. And then from then on in that lighting situation, your camera will be applying white balance corrections to fix every shot you shoot under that light source. Some other cameras, all you have to do is point your camera at the target, go into the menu, and usually push the OK button in the center while pointing at the target. And without even taking a picture, it will sample the, the information on this card and it will create the custom white balance that way. Either way, as soon as that camera custom white balance has been created under that lighting condition, you should be good to go. Now it needs to be said, obviously, make sure you change your white balance when you change lighting situations because I've had a lot of days where I haven't noticed this and I've done a whole shoot the day after I made my custom white balance and all of my colors were weird. Obviously it's fixable because I'm shooting raw, um, but it's something that can, can be an, a thing that is easily forgotten. Now, fixing it in the computer is very easy. All you're gonna do is shoot your pictures like normal. Do the shoot, take your pictures, but be sure that sometime during your photo shoot, you grab one photo of your color checker card, whether it's the color checker or the gray card or a white sheet of paper, make sure that your target is in one of your pictures. So if you're doing senior photos, it could be the first shot, you just hold, hold the card out in front, take a picture of it, and then do the rest of your senior shoot. Don't worry about any camera settings, nothing like that. Do be sure that you're shooting raw, because this will really only work if you're photographing in raw, but sometime during your shoot, take a picture of your neutral target. Then when you get back to your editing program, what you're gonna do is whether 
whether it's in Capture One or Lightroom, you're gonna open up and import all those pictures. You're going to correct the white balance of that one first photo. And here you guys can see in Lightroom, I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool up here at the top of the basic panel. I'm going to click on my target on my color checker card or my gray card, that's going to correct the white balance of this one photo. And then I'm going to use the sync settings button in the lower right to sync this change, this white balance change over to all of the rest of the photos in my sequence. And just like that, I'm able to correct it after the fact. Now, again, you gotta shoot raw in order for this to work. And also the light can't change throughout this shoot. So if you're you know, maybe shooting on a partly cloudy day and there's clouds rolling in and out, this is gonna be a little bit more challenging. Either way, you're left with corrected, perfect white balance images, regardless of the lighting situation. So what I will kind of conclude with is this. Is this something that you're gonna use on every shoot? Well, probably not. You're probably gonna bust it out for shoots under weird lights or mixed lights or things where you don't have a setting on the camera that you can just put it on the light bulb and, and go forward and shoot. However, this is something that I'm always ready for as a photographer. I never know what lighting conditions I might be under. If I was a wedding photographer, I would always have a color checker card in my kit so that I showed up to the weird church that someone was getting married in and there was like, you know, incandescent lights and fluorescent lights and daylight coming in from the inside. I could just pop my color checker card out, grab a quick photo of it or set a custom white balance right then and there and shoot for the rest of the day and have complete confidence that I'm gonna be able to produce accurate colors for my client. Again, not a super basic video, but I hope that was useful for a lot of you. If you guys like this video, definitely hit the like button. I would appreciate it. If you're interested in learning more about what we can do with color checker cards, um, these little things are pretty sweet as a photographer or a videographer. If this interests you, let me know down in the comments. That's something I can make a video on. There's a lot of cool possibilities that are unlocked when you buy one of these things. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily know what all of those are. So let me know down in the comments if that's something that's interests you. Hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. And lastly, hit subscribe if you all wanna stay up to date with future videos. Thanks everybody, I'll see you in the next one.